Hey friends, it's Cody and Carrie, and we are so excited to be with you and your church today. And uh, I know we're in a crazy time right now where we're all having to isolate and uh, be in our homes. But what I think is amazing is that the church is alive and well, and Jesus is alive and uh, nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop us. And thank God for technology that we can come together and worship together uh, in our homes even, which I think is a beautiful thing that we're meeting with God in our homes all around the world. And so we're just excited to be a part and and worship with you today. And, um, you know, there's been so many scriptures that we've really been clinging to in this time. And, And one specifically for me is Romans 8 just talking about nothing can separate us from the love of God. And mm-hmm. in a time like this, I'm so thankful that you can take so many things away from us, but you can't take away the presence of God, the love of God that fills our homes, that fills our hearts, that, that leads us, that guides us. And so yeah. Romans 8 says this, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. That is a good promise that we can cling to today. Jesus is alive. The church is alive and well. And uh, so let's worship Jesus together. I invite you right where you are in your home just to stand up and let's just sing and worship Jesus together today.
be magnified let his praise arise Christ be magnified in me oh Christ be magnified from the altar of my life Christ be magnified in sing it again and oh Christ be magnified let Praise the right, Christ be magnified in me. And oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. We exalt you, Jesus. Suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues to lift one cry Then from north to south and east to west We'd hear Christ be magnified Two. Mm-hmm. 
fire in me And oh, Christ be magnified From the altar of my life Christ be magnified in me Oh Christ be magnified the altar of my life Christ be magnified in me yeah. Hallelujah Thank you Jesus
bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns His face toward you and give you peace. And 
on. Some of you have been having a hard time really holding on to the truth of the Word of God. You've been fearful. You've been questioning. But God, is this really true? Is this really true? And I want to remind you today, yes, it is. And His Word says that everything that He says that He will do, it cannot return void. That it must do what it is set out to do. So we just speak life over you. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here. It's good to see all of you and know that all of you are out there. I hope you're having a good Christmas. I hope the Lord has blessed you and your family. Uh, first of all, before I get started today, I want to just tell everybody, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year is coming up. And I just want everybody to be in prayer for all those that are sick. And, you know, we've had many in the church that have been sick and many in many places have been sick. And let's remember them in prayer and ask God to touch them. But let's also remember uh, our nation. Our nation needs your prayers. They, they need to begin, we need to just begin to pray like we've never prayed before. God has given us this opportunity to draw closer to Him, and, and let's do that this year, amen? Let's just draw closer to God, and let's pray more to God than we ever have, amen? And, and let's, let's pray for the lost. Let's ask that God will save the lost, that this year that's coming up to us, this coming year in 2021, will be a year that we win many souls to the Lord, and I'm praying for that. That is my desire. But right now, I just want to come to you today and just, just give you a little sermon today about what the Lord, is, the Lord wants us to do. It's one thing that's been on my heart a lot as a pastor, is that we be a witness I see that, you know, during this time of this pandemic that's going on, this, this virus that's going on, it's, it's kind of turned the light off a lot in the churches. But that doesn't mean that we individual churches, individual people, should turn our light off with Jesus Christ. I believe it's a time that we need to testify and witness more for God than we ever have. We live in a time that a lot of people don't know a lot about uh, the blood of Jesus or even know about the birth of Jesus. And so today I want to just speak out of Luke, the first chapter, the, the 30 and 31st verse. I want to read those verses to us. If you will follow along with me, Luke, the first chapter, the 30 and 31st verse. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Dear Lord, I love you today and I praise you today and I ask today, God, that you would touch each and every one that's at the sound of my voice. I ask that you would touch them, God, in a way that they would receive what I, you have given to me, the gift to them today, Lord Jesus, that they would receive it in their spirits. And God, that they would take this word and use it today. God, that it would strengthen them, God, and encourage them and lift them up, Lord. We thank you for your goodness upon us. We thank you for your blessings in our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I also want to say, along with my wife, thank you so much for all that you have given us, that the trip and, and everything you've done and that past appreciation day that was that was certainly a surprise to us. We didn't know anything was going on to about just a few minutes before service and and so you really did surprise me and I'm not an easy person to catch by surprise, but I do want to say thank you very much. 
here in Luke, it, it, it's talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. And it's, and, and I want to just, if I had to title this today, I would say, do you know who the baby is? The baby that's in that manger. Do you really know? Christianity is the only religion which begins with a virgin womb and then ends up with an empty tomb. But religion is man's attempt to get to God. But the gospel is God's attempt to get to man. The message of the love of God is that there is still hope. There is still time. There is still a God that, that, that still saves. There's still a prayer that's heard. There's still a king that still redeems. And there's a spirit that still feels. And we as Christians need to be testified more about Jesus Christ than we ever have, especially during this time that we should recognize him is talk about the love and the power of God. See, this, 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 this Jesus came in as a miracle and it continues as a miracle in this world. And let me tell you, church, and I don't think it's much longer, this thing's going to go up in a miracle to heaven. Amen. Jesus was, Jesus is, and he always will be Lord. Because the baby that came, hallelujah, that baby that came more than 2,000 years ago, your life is not over. Your failures are not fatal. Because his death was not final. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So fear not, because you, as it was with Mary, have found favor with God. Hallelujah. you got to understand, in order for this baby, this miracle to work in your life, you have got to get rid of the fear and the depression that this world is trying to present or trying to put on us at this time. We've got to push that fear. We've got to push that depression. We've got to push those negative things back and allow the, the, this, this power of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, to come upon us at this time. Mary, or the angel, gives us the key to get rid of fear. How does it give us the key to get rid of fear? Be, by this understanding that was given to her. You have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. See, the angel won't just speak to Mary just for Mary's sake. Speaking to everyone who accepts this child, this baby into their life, this child into their life. The, the, I want to give the definition of favor. So one part of the definition of favor is you are special. And you are. You are a special person. Amen. And then another part of, 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 of favor is support. That, that when you have favor with somebody and somebody has favor with, with you, you give their support and they have your support. And another is approval. We all want to be approved in this life. We all want to have the approval of people that we love. Well, let me tell you what. When this Jesus Christ comes into our heart, He gives us this approval, hallelujah, that we have favor with Him. An act of kindness is, is beyond what is due to us. We, 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 we would do hell. God, you know, our punishment should have been much more, but He sent His only Son. So you have no reason. You have no reason to fear. You may be even the worst sinner that, that could be in the, in, in the area in Irwin. You may be just uh, stumble around in a place and, and, and come to even to this, this video today. Amen. By, but by mistake. But let me tell you, God has set this up. It doesn't care what your life has been. If you've been a drug addict, a murderer, or a prostitute, it doesn't make any difference. Hallelujah. You are, have favor with God. I don't care who you are. You have favor with God. More than what you are worth. You have favor. Amen. I have favor. I deserve hell, but I have favor with God. You may even be the religious person, but because of the cares of this life, because of what's going on at this time, you have become cold and maybe even something that is even worse, lukewarm. Or you may sit on the pew uh, uh, in a church every Sunday and you really do not have that personal relationship with Him. 
But here is good gospel news for everybody. Hallelujah. That's under the sound of my voice at this time. Whether you've been trying to feel your joy and peace in the bottom of a brown bottle, or you've been choking your life full of social activities, or you've been filling your veins with drugs instead of hope. And hallelujah, still there is yet that emptiness and that void inside of you. And you are still a sinner. You still, you need not to fear because you have found favor with God. You say, how can I, being a sinner, has found favor with God? Well, in this is the love of God perfected, in that Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. Of which I was. I was ungodly. I was a sinner. I was on my way to hell. I tried to fill my life and even my veins with drugs. But God had favor with me and he had love towards me. Amen. The love of God, see, is not based upon you loving him. It's not based upon you walking in a church on any given Sunday. It's not based upon you saying the right words or doing the right thing or even to go to the right places. The love of God has already been manifested in that Christ in the past, that little baby that was in that major, died for our sins. And now he looks on the victory side of that cross and is at a lost and dying, depraved, depressed, on our way to hell world and says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My arms are open for all, and I will give you rest. You have favor with me. You may say, isn't God mad at me? Isn't he mad at the sinner? Isn't he mad at the drug dealer? Isn't he mad at the, the thief or the adulterer or the murderer or the hypocrite? No, fear not. You have found favor with God. So, so, so the big question is, do you know who he is? Do you really know who this baby is? People must know who the baby is. It's time, church. It's time that we tell the world and tell America who this baby is. And the only way we're going to find peace and help, we've got to find out who this baby is. And the only way we're going to find out who he is is at the foot of a bleeding cross. This world needs to find out who this baby is, what he has, and what he's here for, or who is for too. And then, and only then, can we find out who we really are and what we have and what we can do. Help me here, Lord Jesus. Because when we find out who He is, we will know then who we are. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then when we find out what He has, then we can know what we have. So that we can say, I can do all things through Christ. Nothing is impossible. I can, I can, he, he loves me and I, I, he's found favor in me. God loves me. And we have that relationship with him. Somebody might say, now wait a minute. Now that I know who he is and who I am, I know who I am because I know who he is. He's Christ and he's my savior and I know who I am. I'm his child now. And we need to give this to the world. We need to let the world know who Jesus is. Amen. Hallelujah. Then I know what I've got. And now I know what I can do with what I've got. Tells me something about the devil also. You know, this tells me something about the devil. Who he is. It tells me when, when I learn who Jesus is, truly who Jesus is, and I receive him into myself, and I know who I am, then I learn a lot more about the devil. Well, Pastor Calvin, what do you learn about the devil? I learned that he is nothing. I said he's nothing. Amen. He's nothing. Jesus is everything. Mary said, then be it according to thy word. Is there anybody here ready to say, 
according to thy word, O Lord. Let this happen in me. Let you come inside of me and be my master and my Lord and my Savior. What is thy word, Lord? I, when the Lord says, this is the word that I have for you. When you come to me and when you receive me, you're the head, child, and no longer the tail. You're the first and you're not the last. And I'm going to bless you coming in and I bless you going out. Nothing by any means can hurt you. Hallelujah. You are an overcomer now. Jesus is by your side. Jesus is with you according to the Word of God. Amen. People need to know who He is. It's time to tell who the baby is. It's time to tell. See, that all over the world right now. Even the United States, they're trying to be this political crack. What what is this political crackness? Some of it is just the devil using it to try to shut up the church or shut up the word of God. And they don't even want them to have major scenes and all this kind of out. But you need to be telling them about who that baby is that lays in that manger. You need to be telling them what he can do. Amen. It's time to tell who the baby is. It's time that the church world since, the, since we cannot really have the freedom right now in, our, in, in, in the church, begin to tell it, especially all of you that are on Facebook and all of you that are on the, all those places that you can go on the computer. I'm not very computer savvy. Most of y'all know that. But I will tell you that you are all connected with somebody. Please don't let a moment get by this year without telling somebody about Jesus, without telling somebody who that baby is. Tell the good news. Tell them he was being born of a virgin, was both the begotten son of the father, and he was the son of Mary. See, by his, tell them by his human nature, he could touch us, humanity. He could really touch us. But by his divine nature, he could touch the heart of God. See, tell them about on his mother's side, he was just a lowly Nazarene, but on his father's side, he was a royal resident from heaven who came to live in the hearts of sinful men such as you and I. You need to tell them about on his mother's side, he was just a newborn babe, but on his father's side, he was the beginning and the end. You need to tell them on his mother's side, at one time he was just a whimpering child. But on his father's side, he had thundered out words, hallelujah, commands of creation. You need to tell them about, on his mother's side, he was just a poor son of the Jewish descent. But on his father's side, he was the heir to all things, and his father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You need to tell them about, on his mother's side, he was, he was despised and he was rejected. But on his father's side, hallelujah, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Hallelujah. On his mother's side, he came, hallelujah, at one place. He could only be at one place at one time on his human side. But now on his father's side, he's omnipresent. He can be everywhere he needs to be. Whosoever and wheresoever he needs to go, he can go. See, he, he is not just a baby born to peasant parents, but he was the great I am. And he is the great I am now in my life. And he's the great I am in your life. And we need to tell the world that the great I am wants to live in their life. We need to tell the world at a time of all this turmoil, at a time of all this going on in the world, of doing his best to shut down the churches and shut up, God's people reach out and tell them who this baby is. John said he was the word made flesh to dwell among us. See, on his mother's side, he spoke words. But on his father's side, he is 
the word that never, hallelujah, can pass away. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Praise God in heaven. I praise him today. I worship him today. See, on his mother's side, things sometimes were not possible. But on his father's side, we have verse 37 that came on down there in Luke, the first chapter. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Hallelujah. Let's tell the world, let's tell the world who this baby is. Amen. God needs to be testified, the Bible says, in due season. Church, as I see the end time is coming. As I see, church, that the rapture is getting ready to take place. I believe with all my heart between now, this moment, and the next four or five years that the rapture is going to take place sometime within this moment and the next four or five years that it means that we need to testify even more about Jesus, about this baby. He said, testify of him in due season. It is due season. It is due. It is past time. Testify about Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus. In 1 Timothy 2 and 6, it says, Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Who gave himself a ransom for all. Tell the world, tell your family, tell your loved ones, tell your co-workers, tell your people at school, young people, tell them all that he gave himself for them and that he needs to be testified. Let me tell you, I see the need of the testimony of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. I see that need even greater at this time in history Especially in, in America where we live, I see it greater than any other time in the history of this country. Because when suicide has become the number one killer of teens, somebody needs to testify. When our children are killing each other in our schools, in these last few years this has happened, somebody needs to testify. When homosexuals are teaching and preaching, in our churches, somebody's got to testify the truth. When, when, when abortion kills millions of babies every year, somebody's got to testify about Jesus. When drugs are running rampant in our streets, somebody needs to testify. When the number one killer for men between 25 and 35 is AIDS, somebody needs to testify. When America is saying, no more God, Somebody needs to testify. We don't know who he is anymore. We don't need religion. We need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we should testify that there is hope for tomorrow and help for today. Why? Because you and they have found favor with God. So testify who the baby is, what he was, what he's going to be, what he has done. If you really want to know who he is, you really want to know who he is, you need to get into this book. It has two divisions. One is called the Old Testament. The other is the New Testament. Testament is the root of the word testimony. That means somebody ought to tell. And that's what I'm saying to you. I, I'm putting a charge to you that are listening to me at this time. If you are saved, a charge to you, testify of his coming. Tell them that he is able to bless them and touch them. Tell them of all the miracles in the Bible and things that God done to those who walk in the dark night. He's the bright and morning star. To those who are walking through some lonesome valley in that home and confined to yourself and depression is gripping hold of you. He's the lily of the valley. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the staff and the rock. He's the husband to the widow. 
He's a father to the orphan. He's a brother that's always closer than anyone else who never leaves us. Who's the baby? The great I am. What is I am? I am anything that you need is what he was trying to tell us. Church, testify. Who's the baby? See, to the hungry, he's the bread of life. To those in that darkness, he's the light of the world. To the sick, he's the great physician. To the healer of broken hearts and broken homes and broken lives, he's the great physician. For the thirsty, he is the water of life that quenches the thirsty soul. To the weary, he's the burden barrier. To the, to the confused and the perplexed, he is that great counselor. To the lonely, he's the friend who is closer than a brother. And for the fearful, he's the king who protects his own. I don't have fear. I'll be honest with you, I'm, of this virus or even what's going on in the world right now. Not that I'm not concerned. Not that I don't try to be stupid about this virus. That's why we have shut down service these next two weeks just to try to be wise about it. That we won't have a lot of get, people getting together at this time and transporting or transferring it to others. We want to use wisdom, but not fear. I'm not led by fear, church. Don't ever think that I'm led by fear. I'm led by the power and the Spirit of God. My steps are ordered by the Lord. For those so stressed by the pressures of life, He's the Prince of Peace. For the discouraged, He's the hope of glory. For those who are lost, He is the way. For those trapped in bondage, He is the door to freedom. He is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Comfort us, Lord but only the comfort that you can give. Today the fullness of time has come for you. Now is always God's time. Now is accepted time. Today is a day of salvation. You see with every tick of the clock, it says now. With every sunset that happens, it says now. With every sunrise that comes up, it says right now. Every book in the Bible says right now. You, will you say right now. You may never have another moment quite like the time we have now to testify about who this baby is. Father in heaven, I pray for all those that are listening to me and even those that are not that you would touch them in their hearts and their lives if they don't know this baby, if they have not received Jesus into their heart, into their life, that somehow they will open up their lives to you now, God. That they would pray this prayer that you asked them to pray of their sins. Father, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner and I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins and wash all my sins away with your blood. Come into my heart and be my Lord and my Master. And my Savior, be my God and I shall be your child. I love you, Lord, today. I praise you today. And I thank you today for your blessings. Bless thy people in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you today, church. And again, thank you for what you gave to me and my wife. I appreciate it tremendously. I was not expecting it at all. But I do, again, thank God for the blessing that He gave us in our church and doing what He done with all the renovations and everything that's done. And everybody that helped, thank you. God bless you all. I've carried a burden for two I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. Yeah, I see it now. I'm laying it 
down And I know that I need you I run to the Father I fall in the grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father
Walking hand in hand with us So we lift our eyes to where our hair comes from We lift our eyes to where our hair comes from I know my hair comes from the Lord Maker of heaven and earth Run to the Father, fall into grace. I'm done with.